Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Sultai Self Mill. What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope everybody is doing extraordinarily well today. I am really excited because we do have a self mill deck that is not just your basic reanimator list. I think uh, this has a lot more thought behind it, a lot more moving synergies and pieces, and I'm excited to try this one out. Uh, to be clear, this was created by the ever amazing Power Dragon. If you don't know who Power Dragon is, I will, of course, link his channel down below. Please go check him out. Uh, he does a lot of awesome decks uh, or creates a lot of awesome decks and does a lot of awesome gameplay videos. Uh, this was one of his that really caught my eye because while we've seen a lot of reanimator decks, uh, you know, especially over the last couple weeks, we've not just seen some dedicated self mill that isn't as focused on the reanimator and is instead focused more on the actual milling aspect of that process. Uh, and I think he's created a really interesting list here that we'll see if it works. I don't have super high hopes. I'll just be brutally honest. I've only tested it once or twice didn't get any wins with it it's not that i think um it's a bad deck i could have very easily been playing it wrong but uh i do think this is just a complicated strategy and i think it could be a little bit easy to disrupt but we'll talk about all that as we go through i still think it's a really fun deck and i, I i'm really keen to try this one so uh, of course, there's a lot of self-mill enablers in this list, so uh, to name a few, we do have the little Sprout here, a great little turn one play. You mill a card every turn, and then if there are three or more creature cards in your graveyard, you actually get to transform them into a 3-3 three, three, uh, Hulk. Uh, that uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, you can exile a card from your graveyard. If it was a creature card that you exiled, you actually get to put a 1-1 counter on it. So this can really grow over the course of the game, uh, which is huge. It, it really does a lot for the deck. Uh, Ledger Shredder, whenever you cast your second spell each turn, you actually get to connive. So this is another way of kind of filtering through and digging through your deck. Uh, let's see, we also have Vile Spawn Spider. This is a really interesting card um, because you mill a card every turn, of course. It's a 2-3 reach, which is nice because it does give you a little bit of a, uh, a, a play against opposing flyers. Um, but over the course of the game, for four mana, you can tap this, sacrifice it, and you get a 1-1 one -one insect for every creature card in your graveyard. That could be a lot of cards. <laughs> uh, that can actually get pretty big pretty quickly. And so for four mana, you can actually spread your board out pretty wide and then use something like a Meat Hook Masker to either end the game really quickly or just solely attack in. Uh, totally works as well. Uh, we do have, um, let's see, Old Rutstein also mills a card every turn and garnishes a little bit of value depending on the card that is uh, milled. We do have the God of Death here, which we can play on the Throne of Death side very quickly to start that self-mill process or just throw him out as a big 6-6 six -six if we need to. Uh, let's see, I think that's basically all the mill cards. Dreadhound is here, but nef definitely towards the top end of the curve and not uh, like a big synergistic part. It's just one of the big heavy hitters of the deck. Uh, so those are all kind of the enablers. Now we do have things like Willow, guys. So whenever one or more cards leave your graveyard, you put a 1-1 one -one counter on it and then when it dies, you gain a life. We do have cards to enable that, like Unlicensed Hearse, which we can use to exile two cards from a single graveyard. Uh, obviously, a really nice little enabler for that for the the deck, and uh, should be able to uh, get pretty big over the course of the game. Uh, Tenacious Underdog does leave the graveyard as well when you blitz, uh, and so it's kind of nice to be able to do this, repeatedly triggering the Willow Geist as well. Uh, whenever a land is put into your graveyard from anywhere with Slow Gurk, you actually get a 1-1 one -one counter on him, remove 3, return it to its owner's hand. When it leaves the battlefield, return up to 3 target lands from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, also just a big trampler, so this is going to get a lot of 1-1 one -one counters as well and hopefully be able to take over uh, long term. Whenever a frog you control attacks, <laughs> uh, mill three cards, kind of an interesting one. Whenever a permanent card is put into your graveyard from your deck, exile it with a croak counter on it. You can play lands and cast spells among those you own in exile with croak counters on them. So a nice way to kind of, you know, mill the cards. Uh, you do exile them, but you also get to replay them, which is really fun. Uh, Junji is also a great card for this deck. 
uh, because it gives us a little bit of replayability as we need it. Uh, and then of course, Binding of the Old Gods and Blood Chief's Thirst are both removal options for the deck, along with of course the Meat Hooks. So I'm really curious to see how this goes. Again, Power Dragon did a great job of putting this deck together. So thank you so much, Power Dragon. I really do appreciate you uh, sharing this over on Aether Hub. We're gonna do the best we can to give it a good showing. I'm not saying I'm gonna be really good at this deck. I don't think I will be, but I'm really intrigued to try this one out. So let's jump in, let's see how we do. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. Very excited to try this one. Let's see what we can do. And uh, yeah, we can definitely keep this. We've got the Tenacious Underdog plus the, the Vile Spawn Spider. I think we're probably gonna wanna lead with the Spider uh, because it really does, of course, synergize well with the deck. Um, so we'll do this. We'll go ahead and throw this out there for blue. Let's go ahead and get the spider going. Um, this way we can, of course, play Slogurk the next turn, and hopefully we can start to kind of, in tandem with these two, actually get somewhere with our self-mill strategy. Uh, very nice. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, we'll go ahead and play Slogurk. And I don't see a huge reason not to attack here. They only had one green or red mana available, so I didn't see the possibility of a whole lot of uh, crazy removal spells or flash speed stuff. Um, this looks to me like Naya runes, but I guess it's not. I guess it's something a little bit different. Uh, it's got a Bergy in it, which is a little scary, I'm not gonna lie. Um, hmm. Okay. So we can always just bounce this, uh, which is a perfectly reasonable play. Um, I think first things first, we are just going to attack here. I don't see a huge reason not to. Um, and yeah, I think I'm actually going to leave up the Soaring City here. Bergy is obviously a combo piece card for anybody that doesn't know. Uh, you, whatever you cast a spell, you add red and then you don't lose that mana. So it gets very good. Um, let's go ahead and do this now. Uh, this also throws a 1-1 counter on Slogurk, which is kind of nice. Uh, I don't particularly care too much about these, so I see what they're trying to do, which is, I assume, kind of make target creature you control his base power toughness. Yeah, and there we go. We actually just <laughs> immediately got him. Interesting. Uh, well, strong start. That was really good. Power Dragon, we're doing it. Uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and jump into game two. The brand new Reanimator Proxy Pack is now available through the end of July. If you'd like to pick up this month's amazing proxy pack, please visit patreon.com slash itresolves for details. All right, everybody, here we are for game number two. How do we feel about this hand? Um, it's a little tricky. Uh, the fact that we have so many black spells is a little not great, but um, hmm. I'm gonna try it solely because we do have the spider plus the uh, the hearse here that we can kind of take advantage of. So we'll try it. We do have a couple turns that we can use to uh, to draw a black source here. Looks like we are gonna be up against the runes deck, which is definitely a tricky one for us. So we'll do the best we can. We'd like to draw some removal uh, and really just a black spell at this point. Triple tenacious underdog is not great. Uh, and so we're definitely uh, gonna have a hard time here, but. Unlicensed Hearse is quite good against the commies of transients and some of the runes and things like that. So there might be a world where we're able to, um, you know, exile a couple of their cards and maybe take advantage of some of that. Uh, but chances are it's going to be a very quick game, unfortunately. There's our removal spell and there's a card we can't play. Ooh, not good. Okay. Um, well, I mean, we're just going to attack for two. There's nothing else we can really do. And yeah, this is this is gonna be a bad one. Uh, no doubt about it. We'll see what we can make happen here. Okay. Sure. Um, I'm trying. To, I guess we should do this now. Just go ahead and do this. I guess we could have waited till the end of their turn. It didn't really matter. But um, yeah, we'll see what they they end up doing here. Uh, I assume they've got the rune of speed. Yeah. This is going to be a quick game, guys. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, this is just one of those scenarios where we kept a bad hand for sure, uh, but also they just have so much stuff. Yeah, I'm going to good game them here. There's really no no point in dragging that one on. Uh, but hey, we're two games in already. Let's jump into a game three. Let's see if we can get, uh, maybe we can get an extra game in here. Definitely think we can. 
All right, guys, here we are for game three. Let's hope for a little better this time around. Um, and I actually do like this hand. We have a decision to make early on, uh, which is do we want to play the Willow Geist right away? Um, I'm actually I'm actually in the camp of we can wait and just play the Ledger Strider, and then later on we'll play that Willow Geist. I may be incorrect. I'm not 100% sure, but we'll, we'll try it this way. Um, go ahead and get the Ledger Strider. The thing is, the Willow Geist is a really nice enabler for the Ledger Shredder because it's so cheap. Uh, and so it seems to me like that might just be a better enabler than a turn one play in this scenario. Um, also guys, just a quick heads up. Uh, I was talking to our sponsor, which if you don't know, uh, is Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles. Phenomenal group. We really do uh, owe a lot to them. They've helped us out quite a bit. Any Anytime we do a box opening, anything like that, it's uh, supported and sponsored by them. Uh, and it's really a special thing uh, because they are our LGS. I actually used to work there years ago. They are under new management. Um, I say new management. Uh, they're, they've been under the same management for years. New management since I was working there. Um, but uh, Josh is the owner now, and Josh does a really, really good job with the store. Um, and he talked about the idea of doing something like a box break or something a little bit different uh, that we haven't really been able to do before because, you know, obviously just it, it takes a lot of setup and all that kind of stuff. I'm actually going to do this, which is kind of odd, I know, but... Um, and kind of opening up that possibility for everybody and so I wanted to kind of get everybody's thoughts on would you want to do a box break first and foremost uh, and two is there a particular set that you would like to do uh, with the box break uh, if so fantastic please let me know because I really would like to know um, how we can kind of keep bettering the channel and keep uh, moving in new directions and I think box breaks would be a really fun way to do that so just give me a heads up. Let me know what you guys think. Maybe we can get something going. I think it'd be a blast uh, to, to try something new. Um, cool. Let's get the attack in. Um, but yeah, so that was something that uh, just came up in conversation with him. I went over there to pick up some stuff for later this week, and I'm, I'm really excited to, to work more with him, um, more closely with him, because we just haven't had the opportunity in recent years. And so uh, this should be a better opportunity for us to to hopefully represent them in a positive light and hopefully do some more cool stuff with you guys. So that's all part of the plan. Uh, let's get in for another attack. We'll just throw a land down and I uh, suppose that's kind of it. Not a whole lot we can do. Um, they're gonna big score, sure. Ooh, body of research, hold on. Okay, so they're looking to play body of research. Uh, yeah, with invoke calamity. Cool. Uh, that's really good. Um, so, yeah. I'm probably just going to die, right? <laughs> uh, old Rut scene is kind of nice because it does just kind of mill some more stuff for us and give us another thing. All right. Uh, I guess we can do this just to see if we can get a counter on the... Uh, I'd rather wait... Um, so there's no point, in my opinion, in attacking with Slowgurk. If they've got the Invoke Calamity, they can Body of Research at instant speed. So I'm just going to attack in the air and see if they do anything here, which they did not. That's pretty telling. Um, there he should have Invoke Calamity that, at that point. And look, did they just draw it? Like, that's weird. Uh, kind of nice that the Ledger Shredder triggers now. Um, I guess we'll get rid of Meat Hook. I think that's kind of fine. Um, and we'll see what they have. I mean, they do have three mana available, so they could very easily do something cool here. Do they, can they fling it? Is that what it is? Yeah, good game. Uh, that's a really cool combo. We've actually played that combo a decent amount. It's very fun, but hey, well done. Uh, the opponent got it. Can't be too mad about that. They flung a 45-45 ass. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Let's jump into a game four, guys. We got time. All right, guys, here we are for our fourth game. Uh, how do we feel about this? I'm actually kind of okay with it. Having a turn two play is nice, but also just having double binding is kind of sick because um, especially against what I assume is mono green, um, it's actually really helpful to have that. So we can actually lead with the shipwreck marsh here pretty safely. Um, would love to just draw more action and not more lands at this point. So hopefully we can do that, but, or we can't, that's fine too. Um, 
Okay, let's just do this, do this. Binding is quite good though against the Ranger class, which is nice. Uh, it just gives us an extra way of kind of dealing with a mana sink on the opponent's end, which is obviously a good mana sink. Um, I think we don't block and we just take it. Oh my goodness. How flooded can we be? I think we just can't attack uh, just in case. Yeah. Um, we're taking one more. I'm not sold on this. Do they, they are stuck on mana. Dude, what in the world? We have drawn so many. Uh, okay, so we definitely just killed the token for now. Um, we may have to kind of preemptively block here, but uh, I think that might just be the best play anyway. Okay. I mean, I don't love that, but I feel like that's just kind of what we have to do. Not really sure. Um, okay, we'll do this. Uh, surprisingly, I do kind of really like this little 1-1 one -one guy. Um, all right, let's throw you out. Let's go ahead and binding one more time. We'll take you out. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, we wait for the next turn, I guess, when we have death. No, it doesn't really matter, does it? Yeah, I think we'll just wait. We'll take four. It is what it is. Uh, we're not looking so good. <laughs> no doubt about that. Uh, okay, interesting. Go ahead and pull you. Uh, bright side is we probably won't have many lands left. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a card. <laughs> I'm going to attack with our 1-1. One -one. If they want to block, great. All right, cool. Um, yeah, this is, this is bad, guys. This is pretty bad, I'm not gonna lie. Um, yep. Yeah. I'm gonna take it. I think they have a uh, Blizzard Brawl here, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna risk it. Um, just in case. Oh, they probably have a three mana spell. That's fair. Okay. Cool. So we're basically dead. Oh my gosh, how many lands can we draw? This is insane. We have so many lands. What is this? <laughs> oh no. This is so bad. Okay. Well, we're pretty dead. Um, there's literally nothing we can do. They didn't attack with this. I think they would have had lethal if they had attacked there, right? They definitely would have. No, I, whatever. All right, good game. We're gonna do five. We're gonna do one more. Uh, we definitely have time for one more, guys. That was really unfortunate. We drew so many lands. I mean, what the heck? Uh, let's see if we can do a little better, maybe. All right, guys, here we are. Let's see if we can get an actual win with this deck. Please, can we get an actual win? Uh, we will keep this. Uh, we do have a decision again to make right off the bat. Uh, which is a little bit tricky in this scenario. Um, I think... I think this is probably the safer play. Uh, just so we can guarantee the black mana that we need, I, I just feel like that's probably pretty important for us here. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and do the uh, Vile Spawn spa uh, Spider. Wow. Um, and we'll see what we can do. I do really like all the little like self millers. There's a lot of them in standard right now. Like it's just one of those things that you don't really think about because you you generally don't see it played. Uh, and so for that reason, this has been a really fun experience. I don't think the deck is obviously, uh, and, and maybe this is me playing it. So that's not necessarily fair. I don't think this is a good showing for the deck to be fair, um, but that's okay. Uh, it's not gonna be great every time. Uh, wow, we're dumb. We should have played that on black. That's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> uh, I imagine they have a counter spell here, weirdly. The casualty counter spell, what is it? Make disappear? Jwari disruption. Really? They're gonna Jwari disruption? The sprout. <laughs> they oops. Okay. I was gonna say, that seems a little weird. It's a sprout. I don't think that's a... I'll leave that's a game ending kind of card, you know what I mean? 
Okay. I uh, would have loved to have some of those, at least. The uh, the binding would have been kind of sick. Okay. Um, well, first things first. Let's go ahead and attack. Really no reason not to. I'm not going to attack with this. So. Uh, and let's go ahead and play the Omniverse. Or Omnivore, excuse me. I do really like Girl Knock. I think it's kind of a sick card. I wish there were more frogs to to play around with. I know there's a lot of spells that make frogs, uh, but I wish there were just natural frogs, like a lot more of them, so you could actually make that deck really good. Uh, Junji does come down next turn, which is kind of sick because it does just give us like a burn down the house protection or something like that. I have to imagine this is a Hinata deck if they're splashing the white. Um, I might be wrong, I, I'm not positive, but the the white definitely leads me to think that, unless they just happen to be like a Jeskai control deck, which is perfectly reasonable too. Okay, uh, do we think they have a kill spell? Probably. Uh, I think we still block. Um, they might just be trying to get an easy gold span out. It could be that they do have a kill spell and they're just going to get rid of this. I don't really care, honestly. Okay, they did not have a kill spell. They just wanted a treasure token. Interesting. Um, cool. This is the like cool little combo here is when you start to mill cards, you actually just get to replay those cards. Um, so let's do this. Um, they could be an arcane bombardment deck. Uh, that might be worth considering. Let's throw this out there. Uh, so here's the thing. If they are an Arcane Bombardment deck, first of all, they might just have a counter here. We're at least going to get the Connive trigger, though, and make it worth it. Uh, we can easy pitch the Tenacious Underdog. But what we're actually able to do here is just go ahead and exile the two cards from their graveyard and i think they were an arcane bombardment deck <laughs> all right so at least we got two wins with the deck that felt pretty good uh let's talk about this all right so first and foremost power dragon thank you so much my friend i do really appreciate you sharing this deck over on aether hub uh and it's a blast to play it's got a lot of fun synergies and i think in that last game we were kind of starting to see it really do its thing where we're able to mill cards get the extra cards so we can play them uh, and it worked to our advantage, obviously. I think most likely they were an Arcane Bombardment deck if they were just giving up after exiling a couple cards from their graveyard. So I, I think that that was just the right call. Uh, that might have just been a lucky read. I don't know. But um, generally speaking, I do think the deck is well set up against some strategies. However, uh, I do think there's a lot of things in the meta right now that it just doesn't really deal with very well mainly thinking of the runes deck and like the enchantments list because they are so aggressive that your your creatures generally get outclassed now there are ways in the deck obviously to deal with those creatures there's also ways to exile the graveyard so there are a lot of pieces that work really well against the deck um, but it's a matter of getting them all together at the right time that makes it a little bit tricky uh, more so than other decks i would say now again that's just my analysis off of a small subset of games so please keep in mind if you give this one a try First of all, go and thank Power Dragon, please, because he did create it. But two, you may have a different experience than me, and that's perfectly fine. Um, this is just from my initial reaction of the deck. So I did really enjoy it, though. Power Dragon, again, thank you. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget, guys, if you would like to have a box break of magic, let me know. Uh, we, we can certainly do that. If you don't know what a box break is, essentially, uh, you would pay for the color blue and then we would open a box live or do something fun like a video or something and then if you bought the blue slot you get all the blue cards shipped to you that's it that's the whole thing uh now we would break that up obviously for all colors and things like that but just as a, a thought or a food for thought just uh let me know what you guys think i'd be really intrigued to know uh if that's something you're interested in i would love to try it out and do something fun with you guys so let me know guys thank you so much for watching again i really do appreciate it i'll see you tomorrow